You know, when COVID hit, I think we all experienced waiting and upheaval in so many different parts of our lives. Some of us waited a long time to see the people that we loved, family members, friends. Some of us waited and wondered if we'd ever go back to work in person again. Actually, many people still haven't gone back to work in person. We did lots of Zooming and lots of Microsoft Teams, et cetera. And there were so many things that we really couldn't do anymore. We couldn't go out to eat. We couldn't do the regular sporting events. We couldn't see concerts. We couldn't travel. For many people, they couldn't even go to church. Well, Jackie experienced a lot of those disruptions firsthand in her life, and she's going to share a little bit with us this morning. Absolutely. I, Mrs. Brooke hit the nail on the head. It's been a whirlwind of a couple years. I know that probably all of us can relate to that. What a, what a crazy couple eight years, the past 18 months, how long it's been since COVID hit. Um, these last couple of years have been some of the most difficult for me, but also some of the most gratifying. I graduated back from college, back, I graduated from college back in 2019 with my BFA in musical theater, and it was my goal to move to New York post-graduation. So I saved up and I moved to the Big Apple right at the beginning of March 2020. <laughs> well, <laughs> Things were going well. I had a great apartment next to a very close friend of mine who lived out there. I had just been offered a serving job in the city and I was ready to hit the ground running. But then COVID hit and the Lord had a different plan for me. He gave me very clear discernment that coming home was the right thing to do. So I came back home to Milwaukee literally one week after moving to New York. <laughs> Um, and I was unsure how long I'd be home. I thought, well, you know, maybe just a couple weeks, maybe a month tops. This is gonna, this is gonna end. This is gonna end soon. But I'm still here, still living at home, and I'm praying and waiting on wisdom from the Lord on my next move. And I know He's gonna provide it, because the last couple years have really caused me to look inward on myself and bring everything I've been feeling to the Lord. I've struggled with identity, comparison, and remembering where my worth lies. And between moving out and then moving back in and all the uncertainty that this pandemic has created on a daily basis, I've had to constantly remind myself that the Lord has a plan for me. It's so easy to get wrapped up in comparison and feeling like we aren't doing enough. Last spring, right around the one-year mark of me leaving New York and coming back home, I felt the enemy especially coming at me, feeding me lies about how I wasn't good enough, how I wouldn't have a bright future, how I wasn't doing enough for my career, and how I was making no difference at all in the kingdom of God. I was back living at home, working at the same job I'd worked at for the last four years and feeling stuck in the mundane. I prayed to the Lord, asking him to help me make the most of the situation to, and to use me as a light where I currently was. Then, one day, I was bartending at the restaurant I work at, Parkside 23, and a man came in and asked if he could make a larger family dinner reservation. So I began taking down his info, and while I was writing, he became very overcome with emotion and started crying. I asked him what was wrong, and he then told me that he had lost his wife to cancer back in December, the day after Christmas, and he wanted to come into Parkside with his family because it was one of his wife's favorite places to eat. This made me really emotional myself, and I even started crying too, and I felt the Holy Spirit just nudging at me to pray for this man. So. I asked him what his name was, and I said, I know this might sound strange, but can I pray for you right now? And he just shook his head yes and immediately grabbed my hands, and I started praying over him. I felt a little awkward at first, and there were people right next to him in the bar and probably wondering, like, what's going on over there? Like, why is she crying? <laughs> why? <laughs> and why is she praying for that man? But... I didn't care what I looked like. I knew that the Lord was telling me to pray for that man. And after I was finished, he just looked up at me and smiled and said, thank you, God bless you. And he left. And 
I knew without a doubt that it was a divine appointment from the Lord, reminding me that my purpose and worth lies in him. The Lord works in mysterious ways, and he is constantly using us to further his kingdom and shine his light, even when we don't realize it. This interaction with this man felt like the Lord saying, don't worry. You are where you are supposed to be, and don't ever forget how my goodness and my spirit can shine through in any situation, no matter how mundane they may feel. Even though these past couple years have been filled with fear of the unknown, I am reminded of God's faithfulness and goodness. I have a loving family, the most supportive friends, an amazing church I'm part of, and the Lord has even blessed me with a part-time job doing children's theater at the zoo. No matter where I am led, I want God to be at the center of my story. He is so much bigger than anything else, and it's not about me. It's about him and his kingdom. I may not know what the Lord's plan for me is, and I will continue to seek his wisdom on it, but I do know that I am a child of God, and I am called here to live for him, to build his name, and to build his church, and to be a blessing to others. So whether it is while singing here at church, spending time with my family and friends, serving tables, or playing a hippo at the zoo, <laughs> I will live to bring glory to Jesus. Amen. Amen.